Hey guys, it's Morgan. Welcome back to another weekly schlog. Finally, uh, finally, 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 um, it's getting busy. We got lots of work to do. So we're back here. If you're new here, if you joined us because of the beta video or a KTM video or a Baja video or whatever video got you to this channel, this is what we do every week. Uh, every Monday we release, well, I say every Monday. <laughs> I try to every Monday release uh, a video, just a shop vlog, or we call it a schlog, of all the things that happens here in a Western Colorado dirt bike shop. So if that sounds like fun, join us. Here we go. All right, guys, so first on the lift is this crazy, crazy clean Hoosaberg. Uh, I think it's a, what is this, a 350 or a 250? I don't know. I Let's see. I don't know. 76 by 76, whatever that is, guys. <laughs> uh, I should know. Anyway, it doesn't matter because we're doing forks. Uh, this has the dreaded 4CS forks on it. It's a 2013, um, arguably the worst forks ever built by KTM, and... These ones are really bad because um, they're like pogo sticks, like ugh, super stiff springs and no damping, even on the rebound side or the compression side. I can't even push them down. They're terrible. So um, yeah, let's take these things apart uh, and look inside them and I'll show you. God, they're just terrible forks. Uh, they've been done. So maybe someone, which says race tech inside line. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, we'll see what they did. You do need the special 4CS tool. It's Motion Pro uh, 08-0573, although I can say that you should just not work on these. I mean, if you're like me, if you've got a shop, you got to work on them, but if you have a set, get rid of them and get something different. All right, got to take this cap off. I believe that is... 19, yeah. Now we gotta get an Allen. These things are weird, guys. Like, the oil doesn't just come draining out of here. You'd think it would, but it actually, yeah, you'll see. So now I'm gonna chuck this up. <laughs> All right, guys, this thing is being obstinate to say the least. As you saw, it turns, but it doesn't, it's not coming loose of the cartridge. And uh, probably this thing has been together for way too long. So we're gonna cock this. There we go. Need a new fitting for that. There we go. And you see guys, it came apart. It's okay, everything's still, you know, together enough, but this is supposed to screw onto here. And it came loose, probably because it's been here for way, way, way too long. Uh, I, look, I don't know if you guys can see, look at the dirt and grime down there. So we are going to Take this apart. This is the valving here. This thing, ah, oh, these things suck. Really don't like <laughs> these forks at all. All right, I got a bunch of cleaning to do. And then, re of this. <sighs> I hate 4CS forks. All right, guys, got this all put back together. So that's good, still need a little cleaning. Get that done. Now we're gonna do seals, which I've shown you a million times. 
Uh, I'll get those done, and then I'll show you how you put this thing all back together. Guys, got her back together. New seals. Uh, just doing OEM SKFs. They're not quite as burly as the heavy duty SKFs, the green ones, but they're good. Um, and the kit is way cheaper. Like to get all the seals, the uh, little in travel indicators, new circlips, and new washers is like 51 or 55 bucks versus like almost 80 for just the seals uh, SKF. And they're really, really good. So um, there we go. Now I'm going to take this and shove this in here. And you kind of force it down in. Then we're going to turn it upside down and we're going to fill it from here. And it is weird, guys. You'd think it'd be running out the bottom, but it's not. I'm just going to bleed it up and down. So you get all the air bubbles out, or at least most of them. The cool thing about these is it doesn't really matter. Like if you bleed it, because we're going to set oil height uh, when we flip it back over, um, it will bleed itself eventually no matter what. Even if you don't get it all the way bled, it will bleed itself. Um, you may end up with that oil height a little off if you didn't get all the air off, out, but it won't be, uh, it won't work poorly. All right, feeling pretty good about that. Now, take our valving. Do the rest of the process. So not only are these things, they don't work very good, they're kind of a weird thing to work on. There we go. Now we're just gonna Add oil in here like you would normally. And we're gonna set the oil height at like 110 because they call for usually like 100 or 90, um, but they, uh, to me, they're um, they're too harsh like that. So I do, I always do a little bit more. And when you're bleeding this thing, you gotta kind of like. See if I can show you. Kind of rock it. It's kind of hard up here. You're gonna rock it like this and like this and kind of kind of pull it because you kind of work that oil in to the outside of the cartridge. All right, guys. You know you're getting close when if you push this down, it comes back up. So you want to keep going, rocking that thing forward and back until you'll see bubbles coming out until. When you push this down, it comes all the way up by itself. All right, guys, we're all good. Slap her back together. Like all forks, you wanna make sure this is all the way down. Screw it all the way down. I've been tying flies the last few nights. He's like, it's not fly fishing. If you don't cast it, you're not fly fishing. <laughs> All right, guys, next job on this Husaberg is a brake light switch. And it's super easy on these Austrian bikes. And uh, if you guys didn't know, this is just a KTM, a blue KTM. It's a W model. I think it's a FE, whatever it is. Um, oh yeah, here I can maybe, FE 250, there we go. So it is a 250. Um, uh, this year and the next year was before uh, they brought the Husqvarna label under their name. And so they already owned Husaberg. They made them just blue KTMs and then they completely ditched the Husaberg line and went with, uh, um, you know, Husqvarna as their other brand and now gas, gas, all this stuff. Anyway, super easy on these because it's already got lights, obviously, uh, front and back. Um, but right here, it's got a little pigtail set up just for 
a brake light. And if you buy this from Enduro Engineering uh, for $49.95, it's got the hydraulic switch and the harness to plug into that. So it's super easy. No wiring involved, just plug and play. Uh, the hardest part of the whole thing is that you got to um, bleed the rear brake. So um, that's not that hard either. So uh, I'll show you how it works. It's actually really, really simple and really cool. All right, guys, so it's going here in this rear banjo uh, on the master. Amazingly enough, it is a 12. <clears throat> thing about these banjo bolts is if you have everything ready and you swap super fast you'll still need to bleed it to get a little bit of air out but you can actually make it happen um, it can actually work uh, like really well like you can actually a lot of times get it in there quick enough that this thing will actually still work like I said you still need to get uh, all the air out and there'll be a little bit of bubble in there but every now and then you can make it a little easier on yourself so it's a 14 mil wrench and the easiest way is to put this over this and get the box in let me show you on here because you can't get the open end it just won't work so get the box end on now let's test it now i can definitely quite a bit of air but i bet it will actuate it so I'm going to go ahead and get all the rest of this plugged in uh, and then we'll test it, make sure the light comes on like it's supposed to, and then we'll bleed it. All right, guys, got it all wired up. Um, this pigtail is actually, that's from the original harness, so I probably could have plugged something into that, but actually the uh, EE one goes in between these two plugs and then drops the pigtail down, which is in there. Actually, the plug is right here. I've got it zip tied so it can't move around. Um, it's kind of unfortunate the length of these pigtails kind of made it so that had to be here. I couldn't move it back behind here because the bottom wasn't long enough. And this top one, it's hard to tuck it behind this because this is all plastic subframe. So anyway, we've got a zip tie here, zip tie there to keep it off the, uh, the, the um, pipe. Now, let's see if it lights up. Hey, yeah, there we go. So now i got to bleed the brake because uh, it is a little squishy, but um, it works. Super happy about that. Really, really, really easy with the Enduro Engineering thing. So make sure you buy Enduro Engineering setup. Like I said, 50 bucks. Kind of sounds like a lot, except it saves you a ton of time. And it's nice and clean, looks factory. Um, all right, gonna bleed this brake and we'll get on to the next job. All right, guys, next job for me is a tire change. Um, and this is gonna be a good one because my good friend, uh, Ken Campo de Dios, uh, has brought me these incredibly shiny black wheels to not scratch. <laughs> Fortunately, he's got some stickers on here from Go Big Banners and Suzuki that he made and put on there, which is cool. That'll help protect me a little bit, but I gotta be extra super duper careful with this thing. So let's see if we can do that. Boom, there we go. All happy and pretty. Uh, you just gotta be super careful. <clears throat> it's really, the hardest part is actually going on. Coming off, it's, <clears throat> you can still scratch them coming off, but you gotta be careful. Um, but going on, you just gotta be really careful to like lift that tool up and get it in over and then come on. So, <clears throat> stoked, he's gonna be stoked. Tires ready to rock and roll. Um, this is his RMZ 450 that he blew up, I forget how he did that <laughs> he blew it up uh and he's finally getting it back together over a year later so anyway on to the next job all right guys next on the lift is this yz250f custom graphics um and they installed a clutch 
And let me show you something. Sorry, I already took the clutch cover off, so I already know at least kind of what's wrong. Not all of it, but um, there's no that. So they brought it in, obviously. And I look here, and you can see there is uh, no pressure on the pressure plate. Also, these look like the wrong bolts. So let's see what's going on here. Haha! -ha. So sorry, I wish I had been filming up close, but as I loosened this last one, it boom, went down. So let's see. My guess is it was not indexed into. Well, there's a couple things going on here. It looks like they didn't bend the tab up. Uh, and then this was not indexed all the way in. So I wonder if that's because of that. And also, almost looks like we got an extra washer here. Because there's that. But this has a washer so I don't think it needs two let's go look at the parts fish because that's not helpful because um, this already has this and then it's got a bearing actually behind there to to slide and spin so that should be all it really needs all right let's go look at the parts fish mountain look at that bang there's our landing page guys if you want to support us use the link in the description you'll go right here it'll show you our top picks of things for different uh, riding gear parts accessories tires tubes tools anyway it's pretty cool it helps us out a ton so let's take a look at oem parts fish we'll go yamaha motorcycle there's an 09 that is a YZ250F. Let's look at the clutch. And guys, like, if you get here and you're buying OEM parts, it helps us. So, again, I very much appreciate it. So, right there. There's the throwout rod. Little ball bearing. There's the, the thing. I don't know what you call it. Here, what do they call it? Push rod one or push one. Anyway. Then there's that little bearing I was talking about. There's the washer, there's the circlip. So it does not need those extra two um, washers. Now, sometimes recluses used to come with that extra one. So I wonder if this used to have a recluse on it. It's always a mystery here. <laughs> Island Cycles trying to figure out what people do. Um, but I think the biggest problem was that it wasn't indexed on there. So um, yeah, let's go put this thing back together. See if we can't make this clutch work correctly. It might have been that it was on correctly, and then because it had those washers, it held out a little too far, and then when they pulled the clutch lever, it came out and cocked because it was holding it out too far. So um, I'm going to set you guys down, put those bolts in, and yeah, I'm going to use my little impact. Actually, hold on. Before I do that, I'm going to bend that tab up on the nut. So that nut or that washer, see now it's bent up. That is so that this can't come loose because um, it's spinning. Uh, so it's obviously it's spinning and it, you know, things spin, they can come loose. Uh, that's what that's for. Now we're gonna put this back in like it's supposed to be. Oh, I can't wait to hear the comments of people yelling at me for using this on these bolts gonna be so much fun we can get into an argument online like the world does these days because 
No one gets punched in the face anymore. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Now I'm gonna go pull it and see how it feels. All right, so, so this style over here, guys, take a look at this, like, uh, this just threads on and stops right here. There's no adjustment on this side, but there's adjustment on the cable um, up there and on the perch. All right, guys, it's working now. Let me show you. Lever feels good. And if we watch, see the clutch moving like it's supposed to. So that should be good. It looks like they probably need a cable um, because the cable adjustment's pretty far out. Um, but it is working. So let's put this thing back together, put a little oil back in it and fire it up and see if it works. That's a good sign. Now let's pull the clutch in and kick it in gear. Hey, look at that. Sweet, I think we got her fixed. Uh, and I just got to check the oil level. Uh, and then they were wondering about parts for this kickstand. I have no idea who makes that or where to get the parts. So <clears throat> probably just going to recommend a new kickstand. Because, <laughs> yeah, I don't know where we're going to hunt that down. But uh, sweet. That was easy, guys. Um, like I said, I'm not 100% sure what happened, whether it was... Um, just installed wrong from the get-go and they never get it got it clocked just right or if those extra spacers held it out that then made it like come out and get cocked uh, i think i'm going to recommend a new cable for them uh here you know relatively soon it's fine right now um, but if that thing stretches much they're going to need a new cable for sure so anyway that was easy uh guys clutches are pretty simple um, and I'm not bagging on these folks because I'm sure they're brand new to it, but like something hopefully you're learning from this video is that that pressure plate needs to slide in and go completely tight against the clutch back uh, under normal circumstances without the lever pulled. Now on a hydraulic clutch, uh, if you've had it off for a little bit and you put it back on, it's going to be kind of hard and you're going to have to push it because the slave cylinder uh, piston will come out a little bit. And then you got to push it in there, but you still should be able to push it and have it go and squeeze nice and tight against the clutch back. So anyway, on to the next job. So, all right, guys. So we got the bike here. Tell us all about what is going on with this motorcycle. So I'm Brandon from the Rampart Range Motorized Management Committee, and this what is that R M R R R R. What is it? Yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, those guys. <laughs> RRMMC. There we go. Yeah. And uh, this bike was donated to RRMMC for our poker run. We put on two poker runs a year, one in the fall, one in the spring. And this is going to be our grand prize for the spring poker run here in, in June. Which June is super rad. And he wants us to go through it and make sure uh, <clears throat> it's all good. Um, I also offer that to anyone who can actually get it down here before they buy it. Um, but he checked it out himself. It runs, I'm sure it's fine. It's a CRF 230. They're very, very durable, very, very good machines. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> he did not bring the key. <laughs> so uh, I can't start it. Um, I'm going to look and see if I can hotwire it easily. I don't know if I can. I don't think so. Um, I don't think it's as easy as that on this bike, unfortunately. So uh, they did a little bit better job with the key than on something. So <clears throat> I don't think I'm going to be able to start it. But what we're going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to touch all the nuts and bolts on the thing. I take a look at the air filter, make sure that looks good. Chain tension, um, sprocket bolts, spokes, all that good stuff. And just kind of get a good look on it. I mean, even just grabbing the clutch, you know, feels good. There's enough play in it. Like it wasn't run too tight. You got to worry about that. You get a bike that the clutch is banjo tight. You go, how long did they run that like that? Did they smoke the clutch? Um, you know, throttle feels good. It's not doing anything weird. It's not sticking. Um, brakes feel good. I already checked those out. So uh yeah let's just go through this thing and make sure everything's all right it's got an aftermarket uh tuss brake pedal which i didn't know they even made for these that's pretty cool with a you know a drum brake style it's nice that they make an aftermarket one um but that's all good adjustment feels good to me uh that's a kind of a personal preference on how quickly you want it to engage but these are 
super easy to adjust. You either tighten that down to make it engage earlier, open it up to make it engage later. Um, super simple. Chain slack looks pretty good. Um, just looks good. Chain's oiled up, which is nice. Kickstand moves nice and easy. Um, now let's go grab a wrench and uh, touch all the nuts and bolts. All right, guys, let's take a look at this air filter. <clears throat> looks great. Uh, super happy with that, but we'll go ahead and do this. Lots of grease, no dirt. I mean, that looks really good. So super happy about that. Cause like I said, like if someone doesn't bother to do that before they sell a bike, then you should seriously just walk away from the motorcycle. Uh, so that's good. Um, go ahead and take this spark plug out and see how she's running. So looks a little lean to me, honestly, that's pretty lean. Uh, pretty white, but that is, um, that's pretty common with these uh, 230s and these kind of smaller bikes. They, they run them pretty lean uh, from the factory. I don't really know why. Um, again, I do wish that I could start this thing up and try it out, but um, I'm sure it's fine. <clears throat> Someone has been into the carburetor, so hopefully they got the right jettings. They got an aftermarket um, fuel screw adjuster there, so should be good. All right, guys, so went over the whole bike, um, got all the pinch bolts on the triple clamps, wheel, um, axle nuts, just everything, you know, pretty much everything, motor mounts. Um, actually found the exhaust mounts a little bit loose, like on the, where the header uh, goes into the cylinder. Um, not really loose, loose, but a tiny bit. I was able to tighten them up, uh, hit every spoke, tighten those up. They're a little bit loose, not bad. Uh, you saw I hit the sprocket bolts. That's a really important one, guys, because it's an aluminum hub with steel bolts, steel nuts, and sometimes it'll kind of squish <clears throat> and then loosen up and get uh, loose and cause all kinds of problems. So those are nice and tight. Really happy about that. Uh, hit our uh, pinch bolts on our bar clamps. Brakes all work good. Um, yeah, suspension feels good. Bouncy, bouncy, just like it's supposed to. So... It's about all I can do without riding it. Um, yeah, we just went through it. Everything's great. Um, yeah, super happy with it. Um, I was telling these guys before, uh, checked, I even pulled the spark plug out, check that. Looks like it's a little on the lean side, which is normal for these. Like these bikes are lean from the factory. Uh, there's just, I mean, I'm sure it's just the way it's supposed to be, no big deal. Um, but yeah, and it, does it have a title already? It does have nice. a title. Nice, yep. well, that's awesome. Street legal, yep. I noticed that it had all the stuff to be street legal. I just didn't know if it actually had the title yet, it but is street legal. nice. And it came with some extra parts too. The guy has, and whoever wins this will get them. It has some extra gears and some extra foot pegs and yeah, all the bells and whistles. The guy really took good care of it, you can tell. Oh, it's super clean, yeah. I mean, it, it barely looks used, honestly. Yep. Um, and again, when is the thing, when is the poker it's run? June 2nd. June 2nd. And, and how do we find out about it? What's the website where yeah so i'm hoping maybe you'll put the description in the link i'll put we'll put a link in the description absolutely but but and registration opens uh april 19th so okay you can log on and it's online registration only so right on get and, online and register. what is the website if they were gonna go look for it or do you know oh geez ah we got spot. him <laughs> i think it's rampartrange.org that's right um, well yeah. don't worry there will be a link in the description <laughs> don't worry Thank um you. we will get a link in the description um but also i'm sure if you Google, like we said, rampartrange.org or RRM, what is it again? RRMMC. RRMMC, sorry. <laughs> so many R's. Um, the, uh, yeah, we'll find it. But um, like I said, there will be a link in the description. You guys can sign up, show up, and, you know, not just maybe win this, but have a ton of fun. Morgan said he was going too. So. Yeah, I might. <laughs> we'll have to see. Put him on the spot. Yeah, on put that. him on the spot. We'll see. I would actually really like to go. I've actually never been to Rampart Range. Really? Um, no never, way. never, ever. Because. Oh, I do my very best to avoid the front range <laughs> at all costs, but it's <laughs> just too many humans. Um, it's a fine place, but I, yeah, I like my Western slope lifestyle. It's just quiet and <laughs> nice, but uh, um, I do need to get over there and ride. And so this would actually be a perfect time to do it if I can make it happen. So, um, and if I win it, 
then I'll give it to someone. We'll make, we'll do something else. So, cool. um, yeah, we'll definitely give it away. So yeah, super stoked. Um, so yeah, stay tuned guys. And, uh, you know, maybe we'll do some more stuff on this just to remind you guys about all this stuff. So you don't forget, uh, you get registered and ready to rock and roll. So super stoked. Thank you so much. Thank you, Morgan. Appreciate really happy about this. All right, guys, it's the end of the week. Uh, it's Saturday, and I'm going to do a little bit of work on my bikes today. Um, there's no one else here. Lander's with Zach. Zach is back in town, so stay tuned. Next week's vlog will definitely have Zach Sheets back on screen. I'm very excited about that. Uh, and Richie is doing some stuff for his father-in-law. So anyway, it's just me. Um, obviously, there's a ton of work <laughs> to be done. Um, but all of that is like big stuff or waiting to be picked up. Anyway, there's a lot of stuff going on over there, waiting for parts. Um, but I, so I'm not working on that today. Uh, I'm just gonna work on my bikes. And the first thing on the beta, I just got done riding it. Um, and it did not actually happen today. But you see these mitigator bar ends, they're pretty cool. They're metal, I like, whatever. They're good, but see what happens. See, like they bent, hold on. Focus. So you can see how it bent like this. Um, I'm replacing this with the uh, G-Rip and I'll show you why I like them so much better. So if you look at this, it just goes in, right? And that does go into the bar, which is nice. It gives a little bit of support this way. Let me grab you the G-Rip. All right, guys, so here are the G-Rip ones. Uh, he makes two different sizes, uh, one bigger, one smaller, but see how they actually go over the end of the bar. <clears throat> so if you fall, you take a shot like this or like this or like, you know, it's against the bar and not like this that can get bent like that. This thing just will hit the bar. I and mean, you can bend your bars obviously, but you bend your bars either way. Um, so I really like these a lot better. I wanted to give those other ones a shot, but these are just a better setup. <clears throat> now, I am gonna have to cut the grip back a little bit because I don't, it's glued on. And the other cool thing about the G-Rips is that they're made by our friend Rick Emerson here in Colorado. So they're a, a local product. Uh, Mitigator is from Europe, which is super cool. And again, big thanks to Ben Nicholson for getting them for me. I really appreciate it, but uh, yeah. I don't like them. <laughs> there we go. Check that out. That's way cleaner too. Uh, it doesn't stick up at all. I Yeah, I like that way better. Now I'll do this side. Um, I'm just gonna slide the, the uh, throttle in a little bit and we'll get that on there. I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. All right guys, that is way better. I really, really like the G-Rips the best. Um, I've tried lots of different ones. I've even tried the ones from uh, uh, XC Gear. Those might be my second favorite, um, but these are definitely my favorite. You guys, uh, I don't know, look them up. It's G space R-I-P. Um, Rick Emerson makes them. Uh, I know Slavin sells them because <laughs> Rick works for Jeff. Um, um, but yeah, they're awesome. I think you can buy them direct from G-Rip. If I think about it, try to get a link in the description. If not, you can Google it and find it. Um, yeah, super stoked about that. Uh, I think it is time to do an oil change and an air filter on this thing. And then I'm gonna pull my KTM up here, show you I'm doing something new on that. I'm pretty excited about it. All right, guys, we got her all done. Um, hang on, got stickers on it. Anyway, I swap bars. I've been running Woods High Bars now for at least a decade and um, probably more than that. And I've been really happy, uh, but then I rode the beta with the beta bars and I really, really like the beta bars. So we swapped the KTM over to beta bars and I'm really happy about it because one thing about the beta bar over the woods high is that this straight section is much longer. Uh, and as the uh, wonderful person who gave me a hard time about having all this crap on my bars, I like having room for all the crap in my bars. So, and I wanted uh, handguards. I wanted to put these handguards on. I like these Molecule Motorsport handguards. I've fallen in love with them, even though I think they're funny looking. 
Um, they're kind of growing on me, even the looks, but they're just burly. So I needed a little more real estate so uh, I could use them here because my other guards went on the perch. So now I got these, everything's here. Our Enduro is all serviced up and ready to go. Um, just super happy about trying these bars out. So stay tuned guys. Um, it's the end of the week, the end of the schlog. So we're gonna end it right here, right now. Um, guys, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, like I said, stay tuned, subscribe and all that good stuff because we're gonna be getting this thing out, um, testing the KTM with these bars on it, see if I like it. Um, everything else about the geometry is different, um, but I think, that, I think that might really be a good thing. So I love you guys. If you're new here, subscribe, tell your friends about the channel, all that good stuff. And I hope to see you on the next one. And as always, I hope you get out and spread the gospel two wheels. And I desperately hope that what we're doing here at Highland Cycles is inspiring you guys to work on, but more importantly, get out and ride your dirt bikes!